member, uh, and I call the member for Gippsland. Well, thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I rise to highlight uh, ongoing concerns with the number of deaths and serious injuries on our roads. And I want to refer to the recent report by the Australian Automobile Association, which found that road trauma costs the Australian economy in the order of $30 billion per year. That's the economic cost, Deputy Speaker, but of course that doesn't tell anywhere near the story when it comes to the social cost of road trauma. Last year, in total, 1,225 Australians lost their lives on our roads. That was an improvement on 2016, where almost 1,300 people died on Australian roads. And a disproportionate number of those, Deputy Speaker, were on our regional areas. Tens of thousands of people were injured, the walking wounded who will carry the scars of their road crash for the rest of their lives. Now, I believe, Deputy Speaker, that we can do better, and I simply don't accept that 1,200 to 1,300 Australians have to die on our roads each year. I believe there's an opportunity, Deputy Speaker, uh, following a very traumatic December across Australia, to capitalise on the renewed community and media focus on road trauma. I think it provides a rare opportunity for the state and federal ministers responsible for road safety to take a more aggressive approach to saving lives and reducing serious injuries. In my time as the Minister of Infrastructure and Transport, I attempted to drive a national agenda on road safety, uh, but I must acknowledge I was often frustrated and disappointed by the timidity of our decision makers and the public complacency surrounding road trauma. It was as if, uh, Deputy Speaker, there was a level of acceptance that uh, within our bureaucracy and perhaps the wider community that there wasn't much else we could do to improve uh, road safety. And we just had to uh, accept that up to 1,300 Australians uh, would die each year and thousands more would be maimed for life. And you've noticed, and I've noticed, that um, the media only sparingly reports on road crashes uh, in the modern era. Unless you're a famous person uh, or some notoriety, you'd hardly get a, get a story in a newspaper uh, unless, uh, or unless it was a particularly spectacular crash. An everyday Australian, uh, perhaps crashing into a tree on a country road, would be lucky to receive a couple of paragraphs in a daily newspaper. Yet the effects of that crash, Deputy Speaker, ripple right throughout the community, uh, devastating their loved ones and traumatising the first responders uh, at the scene. Uh, Deputy Speaker, we had a, a, a first-hand experience of this in my, in my hometown over the uh, Christmas break. Uh, and the circumstances around the crash are obviously subject to a coronial investigation. But we had the tragic death of three locals. Uh, one boy I coached in under 14 football, uh, a girl, um, <coughs> excuse me, Deputy Speaker, um, a young girl who uh, was a, a friend of my family's and a fellow I didn't know very well. But, uh, Nonetheless, three people were killed in the one crash. Now, that uh, uh, crash, Deputy Speaker, obviously uh, impacts people who know the family, uh, shattered the families, the friends, uh, but also the, the toll on uh, emergency service workers is something that uh, I perhaps didn't understand uh, as close as I should have in my role. And I had the opportunity to talk to uh, the police officers who spent hours at the scene. Uh, the SES volunteers, the uh, CFA volunteers, and it gives you an understanding, particularly in our small country communities, how a crash like this uh, it can ripple right through a community, and it might, obviously it affects the, uh, the families themselves, but it goes right through a, a community. And when you think about it happening 1,300 times across the calendar year in Australia, uh, 1,300 individuals killed, but hundreds and thousands of more people impacted uh, by that crash. I, s I contend, Deputy Speaker, that um, road trauma is a public health crisis in our nation, and we need sustained help from the media to keep telling the individual stories to humanise this debate uh, beyond mere statistics in, in, uh, in a, in a, running, a running count in the newspapers. We, I, I refuse to use the word toll, we refer to road toll, because a toll suggests it's a price we have to pay to use our roads. And, we shouldn't use the word toll because it seems like it seems it gives a level of, of uh, uh, acceptance again to the fact that there's going to be these crashes and serious injuries and deaths every year. But we need to keep learning from every story. Every time this occurs, make sure everyone understands their own responsibilities on the roads and, and the risks that are involved in using our roads. 
So I, I guess, um, despite my, my personal and professional frustration with the lack of progress in reducing road trauma uh, in the time I was in the role of minister, uh, there is a lot of research and other activity currently underway at a national level, which we need uh, to continue to promote. While the states have primary responsibility for road safety, over the period of uh, the past 20 months, I did convene a round table of road, road trauma expert, experts. I brought senior police together from across the country, and we made road safety a priority item for action at the Transport Inf Infrastructure Council uh, meeting of state ministers. I'm pleased to uh, report that the federal government commissioned additional research on mobile phone distraction, which we believe is a, a, a significant risk in, in road crashes in Australia at the moment, and also some research into roadside testing for illicit drug use. Now, illicit drug use, uh, Deputy Speaker, in I think it was 2015 in Victoria, showed up in road deaths uh, at a higher rate than excessive consumption of alcohol. Uh, so while it appears that we have made great progress in, in uh, encouraging drivers to not drive when they've been drinking. Separating their illicit drug use and their driving is, a, is an emerging problem of great significance uh, in the community. So both uh, mobile phone distraction and illicit drug use were suspected as major contributing factors to the recent spike we saw in road trauma. Uh, for the first time, uh, Deputy Speaker, during my role as minister, I wrote to local governments around Australia and provided them with a statement of expectations on how they should use their annual roads recovery funding to actually target safety on local roads. So while there's been ma major investment in, in, in freeways and uh, duplication of our national uh, land transport network, it's actually those local roads and smaller arterial roads where a lot of crashes are occurring. So we're encouraging the local government to target some of that money provided by the federal government directly into road safety. I'm also pleased to inform the House Deputy Speaker that two of Australia's leading road safety experts, uh, Jeremy Woolley and John Crozier, are set to deliver an independent review of the National Road Safety Strategy in the coming weeks. And all of this information, the information from the mobile phone study, the illicit drug use and the uh, work by John, Woolley, sorry, John Crozier and Jeremy Woolley, all this information will be available to the new Minister Barnaby Joyce as he shapes uh, the latest version of the Road Safety Action Plan in partnership with the states. And I, and I'm disappointed to report, uh, Deputy Speaker, that we are currently not on target uh, to meet uh, the expectations we set for ourselves through the National Road Safety Strategy. The latest progress report um, would indicate that progress towards the target of reducing fatalities by 30 per cent is poor. Uh, in terms of reducing serious injuries, we're still not meeting that target as well, Deputy Speaker. And this is a, a, a strategy which has bipartisan support. It started under the previous uh, Rudd government and was continued uh, by the Turnbull government. We need to redouble our efforts, uh, Deputy Speaker, if we're going to achieve our targets we set ourselves through the National Road Safety Strategy. As I told the uh, TIC meeting in Hobart last year, business as usual won't be good enough. We need to be more ambitious in our efforts uh, with measurable actions to reduce trauma further. Uh, through uh, my consultation with industry, we're aware that the safe system approach is the way to deal with this. It's about safer roads, it's about safer drivers, it's about safer vehicles, and it's also about safer speeds. My view, Deputy Speaker, is we need to have a renewed public focus on inappropriate speed in our regional areas, uh, coupled with a major increase in arterial road funding to target high-risk regional corridors which have poor safety features. Through uh, my previous work as a minister, I uh, publicly uh, uh, spoken about continued investment in black spots, continued investment in rest areas and duplicating highways and overtaking lanes, all good initiatives. But I believe, Deputy Speaker, we need to also develop a, a roads of strategic importance program to target some of those arterial roads in partnership with the states. Uh, some treatment of networks rather than individual black spots will also contribute to reducing road trauma and improving the productivity of our regional communities. I'd also say, Deputy Speaker, that point-to-point -point speed cameras should be activated for light vehicles as well as trucks. And states which fail to comply should have some of their funding withheld until they do. Point-to-point -point speed cameras are a fair way of measuring inappropriate speed. I have um, uh, some concerns with the way we use uh, 
single point speed cameras. I think sometimes they're deployed by states as revenue raising devices. And in fact, they don't change a driver's behaviour because they don't know they've been booked until they get the letter in the mail a couple of weeks later. So they might just they may well just keep on speed the next couple of weeks. Point to point cameras, I think, would have greater acceptance amongst the community and would also uh, be a fairer way of uh, catching people who habitually speed rather than speeding at one small point in time. The National Heavy Vehicle Regulator has already started introducing more data gathering cameras to track the rogue operators in the industry and the good operators in the heavy vehicle industry support the use of more cameras because they know they're being undercut by operators who are uh, acting outside the law. I believe funding needs to be provided to deliver more of this technology to punish those offenders and to reward those compliant drivers and compliant business operators who say right now they're being undercut on price by those who do flout the law. I think, Deputy Speaker, there's also an opportunity for the private sector to be involved in the road safety debate. We need to be engaging with the banking and insurance sectors to make sure they're developing products or developing incentives for motorists who purchase the safest car they can afford for themselves and their children so that we can capitalise on the modern technology in, on the, on the, on the, capitalise on the safety technology in modern cars. It's a sad fact, Deputy Speaker, that for most of us, the worst car we ever drive will be our first car, and we're at higher risk of having a crash in those first few years of driving. The more we can do to get younger Australians into newer and safer cars, the better they will be in terms of if they are unfortunate enough to have a crash, there is more protection for them, but also the driver assist technology which is available in modern cars can help them avoid a crash in the first place. So we need to be engaging with the banking and insurance sectors on ways we can incentivise the purchase of safer cars. And finally, uh, Deputy Speaker, without wishing to preempt the Woolley and Crozier review of the National Road Safety Strategy, without wishing to preempt their work, I would say we need to get the states actually working together to share best practice in road safety across state borders. Now, despite some improvements over the last few years, there are still too many discrepancies in legislation across each jurisdiction around training, around licensing, around road laws, and a lack of data gathering and sharing. And I make the point, Deputy Speaker, when it comes to getting the states actually working together to share the best practice. If all of the other jurisdictions were able to achieve the Victorian fatality rate of four per 100,000 people, 253 lives could be saved nationally, with 78 in New South Wales, 56 in Western Australia, 51 in Queensland and 32 in South Australia. That's quite remarkable. If, we, if everyone could achieve the same standard Victoria achieved, we would see 253 lives saved nationally. Uh, the Territory has it's, I know the member for the area is here today and he would share my concerns. The Territory itself has uh, a real challenge because of the vast distances and the standard of roads and the, the potency for multiple casualties in one crash. And we need to keep working with the Territory to get it down uh, to levels uh, more comparable to the other jurisdictions. And finally, Deputy Speaker, I'd say as road users, we all need to take our share of responsibility for road safety. Our police officers, officers uh, the government departments, Ministers and road safety experts can only do so much. The government's $75 billion investment in infrastructure over the next 10 years will help. But every time we get behind the wheel, we need to have a safety first culture and drive to survive the journey ahead. We all know we shouldn't speed. We know we shouldn't drink and drive. We know we shouldn't check our text messages or get behind the meal, wheel when we're, when we're fatigued. But too many of us are still doing one or more of these things and putting lives at risk, putting our own lives at risk, putting our families' lives at risk, putting the driver and the, the people in the car coming towards us, putting their lives at risk. We are still doing too many of these things, Deputy Speaker. We are still speeding. We are still drinking and driving. We are still checking our text messages or getting behind the wheel when we're too tired. It has to stop. In an era when it's convenient to always find someone else to blame, the main answer to reducing road trauma is probably looking straight back at us in the rearview mirror. I thank the House. Yeah.